Good to see you from wherever you're watching us. This is a Tuesday edition of the show. Promises to be exciting. As always, I'm Yemi Adebayo. As usual, there's a lot to talk about on the show uh, tonight. Let me give you a quick rundown of what to expect on the show as we speak uh, in the UEFA Champions League. Most of the matches at halftime, two matches already concluded. We'll take you through uh, what's going on in those matches. We'll be updating you as uh, the games go by. We'll let you know uh, what's happening in those matches uh, as we go on on the show. We'll also talk about the just uh, concluded uh, Lagos Open uh, Tennis Championship. We'll talk about it. We'll take some reactions from that as well. We'll also come home and uh, talk about basketball. We, we also uh, talk about what's going down, the Super 4, uh, talking about the Women's Professional Football League. We'll talk about that on the show. Uh, from time to time, we will uh, be uh, crossing to Europe and letting you know what's happening in the UEFA Champions League. So, um, you know, we'll just be doing that for you. So just uh, sit back, relax, and, you know, just trust us uh, once in a while. Uh, leave whatever we're talking about and go uh, into uh, the UEFA Champions League, if especially if something uh, that you need to know happens. We'll also uh, talk about some of the games to be played tomorrow. We'll talk about it. We'll take a look at how some of those teams are preparing for uh, the crucial games in uh, the UEFA Champions League. That's the outlook of uh, the show uh, today. And so let's bring you into all we're doing. Uh, let's let you know that you're an integral part of what we are doing. Just in case you're watching us for the first time, this is how you can be a part of uh, what we do. We'll do our best to uh, try to uh, get your comments and, and react uh, to them, even the conversation goes on, even when we leave the studio. So. If you want to be a part of what we're doing, this is how you can do that on Facebook channels I have for sports and on Twitter at channels underscore sports. That's how you can give your opinion on issues raised on this program. You can do it through the following uh, feedback mechanism uh, that you have right there. Hit us on Twitter, hit us on Facebook. Let us know what you feel about some of the things that we've um, highlighted. And if there's something you think we should be talking about uh, that you feel is not getting the attention that it deserves, uh, once in a while we've been accused of neglect of some, some sports, you know, quote unquote, lesser sports. So if there's something you think we should be talking about that is not getting enough attention, let us know on the show. We'll do our best to uh, spread our tentacles in that direction and, and, and do our best to cover some some ground all right so let me introduce my partner he starts off uh the show with me tonight and of course we're gonna um you know take you on the trip across the morning spinning world of sports and at the end of the day i hope you enjoy what we've been able to bring kenny idris joins me again this lovely tuesday evening uh kenny it's good to have you uh join me today it's good it's good to be here always especially on, t on tuesdays it's becoming regular and um Let's dig into sport. All right. So we'll dive straight uh, into all uh, that is going on in your amazing and exciting world of sports. But let's start with our own. Let's talk about uh, the channels, uh, track and field classics coming up uh, very soon. Uh, just we, we're beginning to count the days and weeks uh, to uh, the big one, the, the, the second uh, edition. But let's just quickly give you some of the things that you need to know. It's going to come up on your screen uh, shortly. Some of the things to remember, some, uh, some of the events, some of the dates. Uh, let, let's do that quickly uh, as we go on. Uh, on the show, and um, we'll let you know uh, the things to expect, the things uh, to see. That's it. Uh, you have it. Some of the dates uh, to remember. On November 7, that's when the press conference for the second edition uh, will take place. Uh, on November 13, the arrival of athletes and registration, uh, the one uh, track and field events uh, we hold. On November 14, uh, you have the finals of the track and field events uh, we hold, presentation of medals and certificates to participating uh, schools. Uh, that's it. That's uh, the dates to remember. Keep it in your calendar. Just in case you're wondering, okay, what are the events uh, that, uh, you know, we're going to, uh, the, the, the participating schools we compete in. You have the 100 meters for boys and girls, 200 meters boys and girls, 400 meters boys and girls, 800 meters boys and girls, 4 by 100 meters relay also for boys and girls, 4 by 400 meter relay boys and girls as well. You also look at some of the field events. Uh, you look at long jump for the boys and the girls, high jump for the boys and the girls, and you have short put boys and girls as well. No discrimination. What um, boys can do, I mean, girls can also do. So take a look at um, some of the uh, participating 
uh, schools, Govan Senior College uh, from Angege and Waru Islam, uh, Diamond Heights, you have Lagos African Church Grammar School, you have Unity Senior College, you have State Senior High School, Oyewole, Agege, all of this from uh, District 1. You take a look at District 2, you have Oreo Senior uh, Grammar School from Ikorodu, uh, Gregada Senior High School, you have CMS Girls Senior Grammar School from Bariga. You have uh, Baptist Academy in Obanikoro. You have uh, Igbobi College. You have CMS Grammar School, Bariga. And of course, uh, Ikorodu um, High uh, School. Uh, those are the uh, list of schools from uh, District 2. Okay, so you also have uh, uh, Temple, you have Holy Savior, you have Babington Macaulay Secondary School, you have Tindip School, you have Homat Private uh, College, it's in Korodu, uh, you also have Baptist Girls Academy. Uh, these are uh, the schools to expect. Uh, let's also uh, talk about some of the schools in District 3, the list of the schools. White Sand College, Atlantic Hall, you have St. Gregory's, you have Antio, you have King's College, Methodist Boys, Green Springs, and Holy Child. All of these schools uh, in District 3, okay? So you go to Education District uh, 4, the list of the schools. Uh, of course, Ikwanri Estate Senior Grammar School, Stadium Senior Grammar School, uh, Suru Lady Girls, you have uh, Badger Boys Senior Grammar School, St. Fimbas, Queen's College, Methodist Girls Secondary School, and ISL College in Unilag. Very, it's going to be very uh, interesting, all of the schools in Lagos. You also talk about District 5. You have uh, um, Lagos State Senior Mother College. You have Badagri Senior Grammar School. You have uh, Amuo Senior Grammar School. You have uh, Tinkan Senior Secondary School. Federal Government College, Ijaniki. You have Navy College, St. Jude Private Secondary School, Festac. These schools uh, are the schools that you're going to see. Uh, we also go to District 6. Uh, we've told you that it's going to be huge. It's going to be bigger than the first edition. And that's why you're having all of these schools ensuring that they are part of the big one. Agidigbe Senior Grammar School, you have them there. Elukweju Senior Secondary School, Oshodi Senior High School. You have Chrisland High School, Okwebi, and AUD College, Isolo, Oregon High School, Ikeja Senior High. Uh, these are the schools in District 6. They have Commandy Secondary School, also in Maryland, also in District 6. You have uh, Nigeria Air Force Senior Secondary School in Ikeja. You have Police Secondary School. You have the Apostolic. You have Babs Fafunwa and Antony Village. Uh, these are uh, the list of schools in District 6. It's going to be very, very uh, interesting. Uh, Kenny, I, I, I very much doubt if you didn't hear about this, about uh, the first edition. It's going to be very surprising. But it was big. It was huge. Uh, and, of course, uh, season two, the shape is taking. It's going to be bigger than uh, what we saw, which we already thought was big. But this one is going to be bigger. Yes, if, you, if you're a sports person grounded in sports, then... Um, Channels track and field, and also the Kids Cup, Channels Kids Cup, is one thing you would at least say you didn't hear about because it's almost right there in our faces. Whether you're online or you're uh, terrestrial mm -hmm. TV and all, it is there. <laughs> you know, Channels did the publicity so well, reason why they are in media house. And I'm very happy, you know, when uh, bodies like this come up with such an idea mm -hmm. because we've talked about uh, public private partnership. Yeah. This is one thing, you know, that everybody uh, any media house that calls himself huge or itself huge these are you know the the part you should toe because now it's not about the government it's not about state local or it's about the schools it's about the athletes brought about by channels tv a private body you know just to discover see whether channels builds on whoever wins nurturing them and all these schools already would at now start doing a lot of homework Maybe it's a school that does not go through into our sports and all, but with all of this, uh, putting in for this, they would have started their homework already you're discovering names. There are some names that were just here, channels, maybe they've never been part of the sporting setup, but because it's this huge, they just will walk into the team and say, coach, I want to try out myself. And maybe it would just be the next big thing in their track and field or in their, you know, field, uh, in the field event. So, you know, this is, this is very huge. I heard of the first event and I'm so happy, you know, the second event is coming up. And if I tell you I did not hear, 
trust me, that would be a big lie because my school was, uh, my secondary school then was part of the first and is also still here. So massive one and kudos. I, I, I can't say well done, thank you enough to what channels is setting up. All right, and like we always say, we hope that this will light up the fire. We hope uh, the fire will spread yeah. and a lot of people uh, will start doing this. And of course, channels uh, will continue uh, with um, what has been our main motive for uh, doing all of this, which is catching them young, yeah. discovering talents, and uh, uh, you know, other people can take it uh, from there. Uh, like I said, there are dates to remember. Keep it in your diary. We're also giving you a list of the participating yeah. schools, and uh, so it's just go there and cheer, cheer, cheer the lads on. Yeah. Uh, we'll see what happens, and, and there'll, there'll probably be a lot of young lads who. We're not thinking of athletics. We're not thinking of having a career. Yeah. But of course, uh, China Strike and Fit Classics presents an opportunity uh, to push them in that direction. And who knows? Who knows? Uh, maybe uh, the next big star is going to come <laughs> exactly, uh, from exactly this. Exactly the and idea. Trust us from this end. Uh, <laughs> to we're going to publicize you. <laughs> that's one. That's and one. of course, uh, we're going to write down the names. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I remember a lot of people. Uh, one or two tournaments held in Nigeria. Yeah. A lot of people took pictures, did a lot of things, and now it's, it's their bragging right. Oh, I know when Ikakasi came. Some five years ago. I know some when ten Ronaldinho years ago. And uh, was in Nigeria. I, that's the beauty. I can remember uh, covering a, a classic, and uh, secondary school, you know, students were there, primary school students, and a particular lady, she is a table tennis player, and she said, wow, with what I've seen from this sport, it seems at that point, she had never even heard something proper. It's just the name she has heard, but watching it, and she said, maybe now I will switch because it's still racket or, you know, a bat game. Mm -hmm. So maybe I'll switch to this. And that is what it's all about. Expose children, expose, you know, pupils from the school to different setups, and they can choose. Some of them have got, you know, uh, um, they are showing in boxing. But after watching track and field, they'll be like, I think I can try can this. Do this as and well. then I got into the secondary school being a sprinter, but after some while, I started being a long distance runner and I did so well. So, you know, it, it's all about the exposure. When you get exposed, then you know where you can really key into. All right. So I guess we'll leave it at that. And uh, uh, we've told you everything that you need to know. Keep the dates in your diary. And of course, we'll also continue to let you know uh, every new thing that is happening concerning uh, the channels, uh, television, uh, track and field uh, classics. Okay, so let's move on on uh, the show tonight uh, and talk about the Lagos Open uh, Tennis Championship. And uh, Kende, let me um, ask you if anybody told you that um, for round one, uh, for the first leg and for the second leg, we're going to have just one person win both. <laughs> Talking about the male, the male category, yeah. Yeah. Uh, would you ever agree that it's going to be possible? No, no, I won't. I won't. Uh, you know, double-headers have a way of, you know, playing tricks on the mind of the players. Uh, sometimes you get to the final, you're fatigued mm -hmm. and all. But this guy, maybe because he's got a, a, an attachment to the to soil. Nigeria. Yes, the soil came and, you know, favored him. But not taking anything away from the player, we never expected that. We never saw that coming. And even the name really did not ring such a bell mm -hmm. for us to say, okay, these are the Th stars to watch this out this for. This is one of us. But this guy came, you know, won the first one. We thought, okay, fine. That's good. This is tennis game. Anybody could get beaten at some But winning the second one, I think that's a statement of intent. And leaving, you know, that in the minds of so many, especially, you know, at the outside world to say that name should be remembered for a long while. And he did it in, in so much style. Though the other final did not go as planned yeah. because of the retirement. Mm -hmm. But my brother... It is only who got to the final that got, you know, somebody retiring against history, him and he won. If you, if you win the semi-final. We're always, we're always going to remember that Calvin Emery won, won both legs. In, in the Lagos Open. That, that's what we remember. That, uh, I, I think that's just the caption, yeah. yeah. Who won the Lagos Open in the year 2019, both, uh, both uh, uh, um, tournaments. He was Calvin Emery. Uh, so, uh, he's, like uh, Kenny said, uh, his opponent, Alden Sektik, uh, yeah. retired, injured, but we, it must be said yeah. uh, that he was leading. Yeah, uh, it was. It w I mean, Calvin Emery was, was leading, leading so before the injury. Sometimes when I hear of those retirement and you're on the losing side, I'll be like, okay, maybe, maybe that's face, a good way to cover. <laughs> and I saw some fans got really angry. 
saying, you know, they really wanted to watch this final. He is accepting is very good. Mm -hmm. And also with what Calvin did. I mean, cast your mind round. back to the last so the, Grand the, Slam. Exactly. They did it to Novak Djokovic as well. Uh, of course. When he retired, fans were like, you're world number one. We want you, to see you, you play. Should, you shouldn't you stop should, now. You should just play. <laughs> you know, so when, I, I can when, understand. When you get to the, sta uh, to the court, to the stadium, whatever, you want to watch a full length. You want to mm -hmm. watch it go, you know, to the wire, you know, uh, neck and neck. But if it happens this way, uh, as real sport men who wants it fair and fair, we say, you know, sorry, or um, yeah. our hearts are with, uh, you know, septic. But congratulations to Emory. All right, so uh, let's listen to the man who, who's having a nice time uh, here in uh, Nigeria. He has a Nigerian father, uh, but of course, uh, um, he's a Frenchman. Uh, Nambini boy. <laughs> he's a Frenchman, Nambini that must boy. be said. So let's listen to Calvin <laughs> Emery, uh, uh, you know, his immediate reaction yeah. after uh, winning uh, the second leg of the Lagos Open Tennis Championship. I tried to stay focused because everyone, everybody wanted to see me win again. And it's not easy when everybody are on your back and want you to win. When you know it's, tennis is hard, it's never easy. So you have to stay focused to respect every opponent, you know. Even if it looks like not good as you, you have to respect him because one match is one match and you can lose against everybody. So that's what I tried to do. And that's what I did, so I'm very happy to, to bring this trophy again. And yeah, for my people, they, they were there for me, so I'm very, I'm very glad, you know. You know, three years ago, I was a little bit younger. It was the beginning, the beginning of my career. Now I have a little bit more experience. I was like 115 last year, so, so I, I know exactly how I have to play to, to, to be on my best. So that's what I, I did this week. And... Unfortunately, the final wasn't the final I wanted. Okay. I was ready to, to, to play a big fight today. If you're not but in a hurry, it's what it is, so I have to accept that. To I have the trophy again, so it was my objective, and I did it, so I'm the very happy. Lego Two weeks in a row, we'll it's not easy, you know, for the mind, for the body, so I have to recover, to celebrate so with my friends, drink. with my country you're also. And maybe in three weeks, I will come back in Challenger and in Kobe in India. And then I will see what's going on. But I hope come back here next year for a biggest tournament, like a Challenger ATP 250. So I hope they're going to do that for me. All right, young man already enjoying himself, already giving us an itinerary and already telling us he's going to be back next year. Uh, we'll see what happens. And he was very delighted to have the fans uh, behind him because they seem as one of their own. Forget the fact that it seems a lot of people say he's a Frenchman, but a lot of Nigerians see Calvin Hemery as one of theirs. All right, let's talk about the ladies now and uh, talk about India's uh, Ria Bhatia. She, she says she's excited to, to win uh, the second round of the Lagos uh, Open uh, Tennis Championship. Uh, let's not forget she was uh, denied the title in the first leg by Burundi Sada Naimana. And um, it's been a while we saw an African win this, for the this, ladies. This, this was the first mm -hmm. uh, an African, you so, know, winning the ladies. Uh, so, uh, but uh, second time lucky for uh, India's Ria yeah. Bhatia. She hedged out an higher ranked opponent yeah. in uh, Nastia Kola, 7 5, 1 6, 6 3, uh, to cut home $25,000. Uh, Prize money, can you sometimes, you know, you you thinking of uh, <laughs> what career am I in? <laughs> exactly. Let's let's you know, change something. You, you can see the reaction from yeah. Kolak. She she, uh, you know, at some point in that game, she was talking to herself, saying, "Kolak, what kind of service is this? What is happening? What is happening? <laughs> Why are you playing this way?" And that tells you, you know, the the the, the pressure. Yeah. Yes, the, the the frustration she was going through. She she knows she can produce more. But why is she not producing more? Even she did not have the answer. But sometimes it's not about you. It's about the person you're playing. If now they can who, counter... Who your, wants it more who today? Wants it, who wants it more? And also if they can counter everything you're bringing, it seems you're not, you, did, you did nothing. You did nothing practicing and you did nothing while playing. So maybe we should give it all to Bacha. She, she, she brought it on and she, she neutralizes everything Kolak was, was bringing. All right. Okay. So let's listen to India's Ria Bhatia. Um, obviously very excited and uh, immediate reaction after winning. I was really organized really nicely here. I really liked it and everything. I mean, the umpires and the organizers, the sponsors, everything was so good here. I really liked it. The courts, the club, it's so good. I just thought it's just one more set and I, got, I get the finals. That's what I was thinking. Just one more set, just one more set.
And that's how I just did. I can't express my feelings. I can't express my feelings. I was really happy. Just really happy. It's my first 25k title. You can imagine how special it is for me. I, I don't know how I'm feeling right now. <laughs> All right, welcome back. We're still on the matter. We're still talking about the Lagos Open uh, Tennis um, Championship. Uh, we just talked about the Indian uh, lady, the Abatia, courtesy of that victory. She's now ranked 380 in, in the world. And of course, $25,000 is a good prize money as well. But let's look at it from the organizer's perspective. Let's also uh, talk tonight. The tournament director talking about uh, Wally Oladi Joey. This is impressed with uh, the successful uh, conclusion of the 2019 edition, but admits that more can be done to attract bigger stars to Lagos for uh, the ATP tournament. Let's listen to him, uh, his take on the just concluded uh, championship and, of course, what to expect in years to come. We have to painstakingly plan for it, and um, it doesn't happen by luck. You could pray for luck, you could pray for God guidance, you could pray for it, but then you have to hard work. You can see services. If services are being recorded at 153 miles per hour, you see that it's no ordinarily spiritual. There is a, a bit of firepower, power and uh, uh, energy and strength to it. So we have to act, act, I mean, engage our youngsters at that tender. The way to see them I mean, uh, start off, with throwing a ball with the left hand or left hand. We're even looking for lefties. We have, have we had them done, the McEnroe, the Nada. We will have them done. Let us get them by 83 and let's do. We agreed and we admit, admitted there is a heavy investment in tennis. So we have a personal mandate, a corporate mandate, a group mandate that we're looking at the last three, four years, hopefully in support of, uh, of other well-meaning Nigerians and sponsors to increase the price money. When the price money goes up, whatever your life can go and stay. We could just get a promotion for them where it's convenient, but we don't have to pay for that. We know how much to pay. We won't divert that into price money and get the price money up. So when we get the price money up, the likes of Emery will come, the likes of number 80, number 60 in the world will come. That's the aim. The main focus of the Federation is on the junior players. For a very long time now, we have not even had an ITF junior event, but uh, this year, in November, from here, we have two weeks that will happen in Abuja, uh, a J5. Uh, it's an international event just like this, but this is uh, for the junior uh, level players. For the seniors, honestly, when you're above 18, you should be developing yourself, find sponsors. We can where we, where, where we have that possibility to support you, but you should find the ways of playing, getting sponsors. If you need us to support you, we will definitely have um, words and, you know, whatever. But as for funding as a federation to fund players, it is not there. I mean, it's not there as a budget or as funds coming from anywhere. Uh, so whatever we earn so far are from sponsors who, who give us funds to support the game and then partly we partially sometimes when we host tournaments, the International Tennis Federation gives us some uh, subsidies. That's how we've been surviving. But we, we have a massive drive to see how to raise funds from um, corporate sponsors and individual sponsors. That way, we can increase the number of tournaments uh, um, we are going to be having. All right, you're listening to the tournament director, Walela Dujoe, uh, and of course, Ifeda Akindoju, as the NTF um, uh, Tennis Federation president. Uh, and both, you know, spoke on ages. Uh, I mean, Walela Dujoe, you know, wanting that the prize money to increase, uh, hoping that a lot of corporate bodies would join. And the, of course, um, if you're also talking about some of the challenges uh, about supporting the junior players. I remember a lot of you also talking about the, the, the hope and desire to, to discover talented tennis player. Lefties, he has to talk about lefties. They're very, they're very unique. And um, I mean, I like the vibes. I like yeah. the vibes I'm getting, and I hope next year's edition will be bigger and better. Yes, uh, Ola Dujoye, we popularly call him Prince. Mm -hmm. He's a man who, I don't know where he found that love for tennis, although he's sometimes called on tennis here because of where he still played. He, he's, he's been there, 
is seeing it all. Mm -hmm. And when you're talking about prize money, it's also one of the criteria that helps to, you know, take the sport to the next Boost level. Like the... Emery was mentioning, Challenger mm -hmm. and ATP 250. 250 in the ATP, you know, ranking, there is 250, 200, and 1,000. The, the money is one of the criteria that takes you to that level. Then the organization mm -hmm. and the kind of players. Who, now, if you increase the money, he was talking about ranked uh, players that are ranked 80, 60, who want to be part of it. That means it's already having some growth. And we know that it just grew to series last year where he now changed him from Governor's Cup to Lagos Open. And that is what he's talking about. We should channel a whole lot into, you know, prize money than what we spend. Right. For the uh, Akindoju, the president of the uh, uh, Nigerian Tennis Federation, junior players, I think this is a man who understands this is my federation. I must start from the roots. Mm -hmm. And what, where is the root, the junior players? Yeah. By the time you start from there, the left is that Prince is asking of, they are all there. Mm -hmm. Just start to, you know, continue, nurture com them. Nurture, continue competitions to discover them and then nurture them. You'll find them scattered all around Nigeria. All it's right. always very funny. If you come up with a spot today, Yemi, you would ask yourself, where are these guys who are involved in this sport? Where, where were they, they before? Being? Where were, what were they doing? Because they just come at you and they have high level of professionalism. It's just, you know, they are just waiting for that you, opportunity. You know, before we leave, leave the matter, you, you, you told me something you would have loved to yeah. uh, talk about. Maybe I should just allow you. You, you commended the, um, the, the, the playing surface. Yes. And those who kept who, the who playing kept, surface. Yes, yes. And, and uh, even the pictures show how, how lush and, and how good it was. They, they do that like every other time. Private players, uh, um, tournament players, Nigerian state players, all go there, like the Oyinlomo Kodri. For the times I've seen Oyinlomo Kodri play in Nigeria, it's been there. And you see, whenever Oyinlomo Kodri moves around, the Mary Love Edwards, these girls are well revered. They see them and they honor them. As whole as Prince is talking about Ola Dujoye, he says that be like, star, superstar, you know, stuff that it makes them feel like they are well, you know, uh, uh, respected. And that is what and, the, and that you, setup you think had done over the years. Surface could attract top stars. It could. It could. The, the only way it is. Thing, yes, the, the only thing left is you can build on that. Yes. Already, you know, you just need one or two touches here and there. They've got a conference room, mm -hmm. they've got, you know, courts. Not the, just the ambience because, is good. I've been the there a couple ambience, of times. It's, and it's very colorful. Yeah. You go there, you love the color. So, you know, it's something, it, it's already something good. Just had one or two, and then maybe some support cuts around. And then it, it goes to the next level. All to right. get, get into the next level is not a rocket science. It's just little things here and there. Anytime I hear rocket science, uh, a smile comes to my face. <laughs> exactly. I won't tell you why, though. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, let, let's go to Europe and uh, spend a few minutes in, in Europe. And um, what we're going to do is just take a look at the results, live scores from the UEFA Champions League. Just in case you're not watching, let's help you out. Let's just help you out. Uh, this is what is happening as we uh, speak. Uh, when we came into the studio, it was 1-0. Mario Icardi got to go for PSG, but now it's 3. Uh, you have Galatasaray and, and Real Madrid. Tony Cruz yeah. got a goal for Real Madrid. Olympiacos and uh, Bayern. Uh, Robert Lewandowski was on the score yeah. sheet. I think Olympiacos got on the score sheet first. So it's 2-1 now. Tottenham Outspore, all the criticism has gotten to them and they are tearing rest up a great. No, it has gotten to Mauricio Pochettino. Oh, okay, it's gotten to Pochettino <laughs> and they are tearing rest up a yeah. great. Uh, Shakhtar the next in, the game, in some of the games played earlier yeah. uh, against Dinamo Zagreb. We knew that game was going to be close. Yeah, very. Against, you know, two perennial mm -hmm. campaigners in the Champions League. So that, that has been uh, concluded. Yeah. At Manchester City, uh, a lot of people say things about Pep Guardiola, but I think he's a man that knows how to solve problems. Nicolas Otamendi yeah. on the bench, John Stones on the bench, and he plays Fernandinho and Rodri, centre-back pairings. Look at the score. You know, there is no, there, there, it is no problem having a problem. It's how you go about the exactly. problem. That is the problem. And he told us, I don't have a he problem, knows he would always I'm going to solve it. He would always have a problem. But how solving it is what has kept Guardiola at that height. And look at the scoreline. He says all of the stories. He just tells us the story. Yeah. And Atletico Madrid, you, you could always predict the scoreline. Any game involving it's, it's Atletico Madrid. Really. No, one, one, oh, one nil, two one. I get the business done. But you get the business done. I get done. the business Alvaro done. Alvaro Morata yeah. getting the goal yeah. uh, for Atletico Madrid. One nil against Bayer Leverkusen. And surprise, surprise, yeah. in Turin, <laughs> in Turin, Juventus trailing Lokomotiv Moscow. From local to foreign, 
to other planets. I heard a lot about Juve Woods here, Locomotive mm -hmm. Apart. And also, Ronaldo will be getting goals, 702, so 3, two, three in and, this game. But up until now, it's, it hasn't happened. It's looking like <laughs> maybe they would deduct goals from <laughs> their top goal scorer. <laughs> like we told you earlier, two games already yeah. concluded. Uh, some of the other matches in the dying moment, uh, Shakhtar Donetsk and Dinamo Zagreb concluded two yeah. all. Atletico Madrid, the Bayer Leverkusen, also the game is concluded. Alvaro Morata, like I said earlier, got, got I, that I goal. I think the, the beauty of everything I've seen, maybe to some people it's not a beauty. All of the teams that are expected, whether he's struggling or not, expected to win their fixtures are doing that right. Mm -hmm. Like um, we mentioned that Nam going through some issues. Mm -hmm. We thought, okay, how are they going to uh, um, stay today? And look at... Tottenham, five. Five. That's just what I'm, just that's as what we're I'm speaking. Saying. Before the game, we thought... There is a, a, a whole lot of problem, especially playing a rest of Belgrade at this point. It might be tough. Let Look me hold you City. again. Let me yeah. hold you. Bayern, it's 3-1 now. It's 3-1. So, you know, it, it's, it's, it's like um, these guys understand where they are. I, I mentioned this some weeks back that every big team or any serious team, by March day four, ending on March day four, yeah. they want to have qualified. Do business. Now, let's leave Champions League up until February. Let's face the league and some other cups who will be involved. So in. we'll come back so to you by if February. If you're still struggling at March day four, then you're already heaping so much work Pretty on sure. your players. And if you do that, it spills into next year and it gives you, you know. So, so when you find things not doing well at the end of May, go to this period, this November, December, January, February period where you, you couldn't undo business or clinically do it when others are doing it and you left it to spill. Fatigue cannot be taken away from all of these all guys, right. the, the, the gladiators. <clears throat> all right, so uh, that's it. Trust us to let you know if any, uh, if any other thing is happening in the UEFA Champions League, but that's the way it stands uh, for now. Let's come back home now. Let's take a look at basketball. Uh, let's talk about the Men's President Cup. And let's take a look at day one uh, results. Allow Kenny to take me through some of the numbers. Uh, the results will come up on your screen yeah. shortly. Very interesting results uh, in there. You have Lagos Islanders um, defeating Police Bay. That's day one. Defeating Police Bay 64 to 53. The Dan Warriors uh, beating Cole City Miners 58 points to 44. Army Rockets uh, beating close one in there. Uh, beating Benue Braves 58 points to 48. You have a Kitty Invaders uh, losing a uh, very painful way to lose, losing to <laughs> Raptors 70 points to 71. Yeah. Quara Falcons uh, defeated Niger Porters 87 points to 59. Ondo Raiders. Uh, were raided. Um, they were raided. Uh, by, the <laughs> by the Hoopers. By the Rivers Hoopers. 28 to 85. Yeah. Uh, okay, then let me just quickly take a look at day two. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Uh, day two results as well. I mean, Rockets uh, losing to uh, Lagos Islanders, uh, 56 points to 69. Uh, Raptors uh, on day two uh, defeated the Dan Warriors, 70 points to 56. Uh, Bedway Braves lost uh, to Rivers Upas, 30 points to 77. You have the Cold City Miners also losing to Quara Falcons, 57 points to 80. Ondo Raiders raided again, uh, 35 points to 59 uh, against Police Baton. Then you have Civil Defenders beating Niger. Your quick reaction to this before we take a look at day. Okay, let's just take the three fixtures out of the way then. Uh, the three fixtures, Benue Braves uh, taking on uh, Lagos Islanders, the Dan Warriors taking on Civil Defenders, Ondo Raiders. Uh, hopefully they won't be raided in that one. Uh, they're going to be Rockets. You have AKT Invaders um, up against Niger Potters. You have um, Rivers Hoopers taking on Police Baton and uh, Raptors up against Cole City Miners. Before we talk about the ladies, your impression, let, let's just stop with the guys. Your impression, like, day one, day two then. Yeah, like um, weeks that we, we discussed uh, handball, I, I love teams that preserve their names or their, uh, um, their level for, for years now. Mm -hmm. And I already saw some names in match, in two-day matches, already doing, you know, what we expected them to do. Like I noted out some names, Lagos Highlanders. Highlanders was one of those basketball clubs that made me love basketball while I was very young because they play basketball everywhere and it's always a beauty. And look at them, you know, ma uh, two matches now already doing very fantastic. Also, the Raptors, the name sounded like the Raptors who just won the, the NBA, NBA title. Season. Yeah. But the Raptors have also been a perennial name in Nigeria. And I love when this comes up, the President's Cup. These are clubs I want to see. Also, Rivers Hoopers taking two games already. Fantastic one. Quara Falcons. Somebody asked me, oh, 
a Falcons ladies that because the Falcons know Falcons <laughs> are yeah. not just you know and, and you are not just about out. ladies. Okay. So I had to sell so and Falcons, uh, Quara Falcons doing fantastic now for match day three. Some matches I really want to see. Lagos Islanders against Benue Braves. Benue Braves not doing so well, but I'm always scared of teams that have gone through games and not do so well. Mm -hmm. They always look for that match that will turn it all they around. They have nothing to lose, really. Yeah, they, they have nothing to they're lose. They're backed against the wall, so yeah. they just fight. Yeah, exactly. And they need something to turn. And if you beat the Lagos Islanders, you 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 already have your season, you know, That's turned a around. Big scalp. That's a big scalp. And and also uh, um, for the River Sopas against Police Batting, Police Batting have just one win and looking to you know build on that. Rivers have blown teams aside. Talking about River Sopas, so Police Batting are, are scared. But if you dwell in your own confidence, it might just be you know your greatest undoing against a team that are looking to, you know, get at par with teams uh, um, at that top. All right. So let's talk about the ladies, though. Yeah. Uh, let's uh, talk about the women's, uh, MBBF Women's Basketball League. Uh, let's talk about the ladies, the quarterfinal results, and um, very interesting results we do have. And uh, let's talk about it. Let's, uh, very sure it's coming up on your screen. Yeah. Uh, so First Bank uh, beating Black Gold Queens, uh, 90 points to uh, 32. We're talking about the quarterfinal uh, results. There you have it, uh, 90 points to 32. Hair Warriors, uh, this is a blowout, really. 103 <laughs> points uh, to 50 up against Plateau Rocks. Uh, so Hair Warriors won that one. Dolphins, very, very close close game. I'm very sure those who are at the venue enjoyed themselves um, yeah. this one. Uh, 89 points to 88. Dolphins uh, edging uh, Delta Force. Then you have uh, Nigeria Customs uh, up against MFM uh, Queens. Uh, MFM Queens were able to salvage something. <laughs> won that game. 66 points to 53. And that takes us to the semi-final fixtures. Yeah. And I'm going to get your thoughts uh, on uh, this one. There you have it. First bank up against uh, Air Warriors. Uh, Dolphins up against MFM Queens. That's uh, that's it for the women's basketball semi-final fixtures. Your thoughts on the ladies? The closest game, actually the most interesting game, not because the scoreline is so close, but these are very good teams. And, you know, seeing that game, understood that they, they went at each other from the get-go to the end. Fantastic for um, Dolphins, Delta Force, and, you know, uh, uh, Dolphins taking that. I guess that would be like the final for them. If you, this is somebody, you know, uh, um, joked and said, beating Delta Force in that way is already, you know, you win the trophy. And look at the, the setup that got to the final, uh, um, to the semi-final. First Bank, an institution already. Mm -hmm. First Bank has got a football team. First Bank have, have had, they have their hands in a lot. And, you know, very good one if they continue in that state. Also, uh, um, Air Warriors. I'm particularly attached to Air Warriors for reasons maybe I'll tell you <laughs> after, after the, the show. show. But a very good side. This is, you know, a, a side that if you go into their CV, talking about their statistics, you would love them, you know, watch them play. And for the last team, MFM, barely three years, you know, set up. And look at what MFM is doing. MFM got their players at the uh, um, championship some, some times back. Two players out of four from MFM going to represent Nigeria. I don't know what is it they, they did, you know, bringing all of these ladies together, but fantastic. Getting to the semi final now. Very good one. Now, the semi final pairing First Bank against Air Warriors, Dolphins against MFM. I cannot go with any of this team because I kind of love all of these teams in different angles. Some for the institution they built, mm -hmm. some for their consistency, some for the fight, and for like MFM. I love the fact that a new setup comes in and almost teaching every other setup that this is how to go about business. But for neutrals, just go ahead and enjoy these fixtures because it's going to be mind blowing. All right, so and you don't get to have this uh, all the time, okay? Uh, if I allow Kenny, they will go on and on, but we have to pause. We're going to break. When we return from that break, we'll still be talking about the ladies, but this time, football. Then we'll also travel to Europe and let you know what's happening in the UEFA Champions League. John Sigal. All right, welcome back. Let's, uh, we're, you know, moving towards, um, uh, I mean, we're almost crossing the finish line on the show, if I can put it that way. So uh, let's just, a uh, few minutes we have left, let's talk about football, talk about the ladies, what's happening in uh, Nigeria. Let's talk about the 2018-2019 Women's um, League Super 4. Let's just give you the program schedule, what to expect in the days uh, to come. Uh, of course, the arrival of clubs uh, is going to be on Tuesday, 29th of October. You have the pre-match meeting slash 
press conference is going to take place the next day, Wednesday, 30th of October. The warm-up by the clubs on Thursday, October to the 1st. Then you have March Day 1, Friday, November 1st. March day, uh, rest day, Saturday, November 2nd. Top place and final on uh, Sunday, November the third. That is what to expect. These are the four teams. Uh, can you just quickly take us through the four teams? That in, in, Angel in between Queens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, Angels don't do well here. So maybe it will be Rivers Angel. But they've got an outstanding experience compared to all of the teams. But this fourth setup is very good. So I'm, I'm waiting to see a very good one. But what, uh, what uh, caught my attention in all of this is the breakdown of the program. Mm -hmm. Maybe sometimes I, I, I usually say that the ladies are very meticulous. They take note of little things. Look at the breakdown, arrival of club, mm -hmm. uh, pre-match meeting, press briefing, you know, warm-ups. This is what it should be. It shouldn't be packed into, you know, one day or two days. Now, very good one. The ladies have got, you know, their programs. This is how you go about the setup. So anybody who eventually wins, you all had equal chance to, you know, attend to all of the business. So let's let's have a good super for it starts next week, Tuesday, and it ends on Sunday. Fantastic one, really. All right. Okay. So uh, let's leave that and. Um the last item that we're going to, we're going to, last topic, the last thing we're going to do uh, on the show is talk about the UEFA Champions League. So let's give you a situation report. Let's go to live score now and, you know, check if anything has changed um, in those matches. I I'm very sure a lot of those games will have ended by now. PSG rampant uh, in this one, five past Club Rouge. You have Galatasaray losing to Real Madrid, only Piacos. Um, 3 2. You have Tottenham. I mean, uh, Kennedy says Mauricio Pochettino is the angry one. Uh, <laughs> so uh, they hit Red Tab a great 5 5 0 Shakhtar and uh, Shakhtar the next and Dinamo Zagreb. That ended earlier 2 all. You have uh, Manchester City up against Atlanta. Uh, and that was 5 1. Atletico Madrid and Bayer Leverkusen. Uh, Atletico Madrid won that one. Cuts off a goal from. Um, uh, Alvaro Morata and Juventus have <laughs> responded in the way we expect them to. Two one up uh, against Lokomotiv Moscow and uh, good. At, I mean, it's good to say they've they, they've crossed the line. Juventus heard us talking. Yeah, they heard us. You know, call out, <laughs> call them out. And I, I, like you said, this is the way top teams respond. Uh, when the game is not over, you don't write out. You know, mm -hmm. good teams like this. And we're waiting to know, especially you know, who scored for who them. Who scored? Yeah. If uh, if a certain Cristiano Ronaldo is among the uh, goal scorers, I guess if you have two goals on the sheet, one, then you can. At least say Ronaldo won't, won't be part of If Ronaldo doesn't score any of these goals, <laughs> then it will be one of those wonders. All right, as we leave, <laughs> let's take a look at what's going to happen tomorrow. As we leave, let's quickly do that. Yeah. Uh, the fixes for tomorrow, let's see if we can just get out of the way and um, as we prepare to take our leave, uh, that's it right there. I'll see you again. Uh, take off Liverpool, uh, Salzburg, take on Napoli. You have Inter Milan uh, up against um, Dortmund. You yep. also have Slavia Prague up against Barcelona. RB Leipzig up against Zenit and Petersburg. Benfica up against Olympic Lyon. Ajax up against Chelsea. Lille up against Valencia. In less than a minute, pick, your, uh, pick the game you want to see and why. I think two games, Inter Milan and Dortmund for me, that, that would be massive. You, we, we talked about the presence of Conte in the dugout for Inter Milan. And also Dortmund, pretty decent side any day, any time, especially when they want to play. For Ajax and Chelsea, that's another game. Ajax, we know what they did. Mm -hmm. And what they are doing this season, not bad a team. And for Chelsea, I think they are discovering their mojo under uh, uh, um, Frank Lampard. And maybe we will see another fireworks from Chelsea uh, going to Amsterdam. But for Ajax, I, I think they are a good, a good side. They will show what, what the stuff they are made of again. And um, for sentimental reasons, I'll, I'll yeah, be look, watching Lille. Lille. Uh, focus my own boy. Yeah, I, I think uh, a lot Victor of, uh, like Slavia, Prague, uh, um, Lille. Mm -hmm. Also today, Lokomotiv Moscow, Nigerians are scattered in all yeah. those teams. But for Club Bruges, I think now I don't want to see Club Bruges <laughs> <laughs> because already, <laughs> our man Denis Emmanuel is already yeah, feeling the heat. Uh, Okay, so uh, that's <laughs> it. We'll see what happens. We'll see whether our predictions yeah. are anywhere near uh, what will happen when these games are played. Uh, Kenny Idris, I want to thank you for your time on the show. It's always, always, good to be here. always a pleasure doing this with you. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, we'll do this again next <laughs> of week. Of course, of course. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you as well for allowing us to be a part of your day. We do hope that you've enjoyed what we brought to you today. And of course, we'll be back here tomorrow to take you on a trip across the money spinning world of sports. I'm Jamie Adebayo. Bye bye now.